All right. So Instagram is an interesting platform. It's, it's, it's literally, it's the second most popular platform uh, on the planet. TikTok is, is slowly, slowly catching up to it. Um, but uh, originally it started out as a photography platform. It was for photogra photographers to be able to show their um, content uh, from a social media standpoint. And I remember I got on it, I think in 2009 or 10, somewhere around there. It was, it was a very, I was very early into the app and um, it's evolved obviously into what it is today, but uh, it, it is a big barometer from a standpoint of where the world is going from a social media content um, uh, directive. Um, so I 100% believe that uh, it is probably the, at this point, the, I believe it's the most important platform to be on. Um, I know Facebook is still absolutely important, but Instagram, in my opinion, is much, much more important. And the reason I say that is because um, the amount of time that is spent within the app is now almost equal to Facebook, which is pretty amazing. So Instagram is going to reach about 100 and, uh, and it's actually going to be more than this now. And the reason that it's going to be, these numbers are going to be a little bit faster and increase a little bit faster is because everyone now is at home. Okay. So now that being everyone is at home, two things have now happened. Businesses have pulled back on advertising. So what that means is the cost per click or cost per engagement, if you run an ad, let's say on Instagram, would be 30% less than what you would typically pay for it. So you're going to be seen by more people, but you're going to pay less for that potential impression or click um, when you're running ads today. So if you're not running ads right now, it's a really good time to invest your money into running ads and build brand um, just because of the cost to be able to get in front of people is much, much less, actually 30% less. Um, but the mobile phone usage and in app usages are up 60% almost across the board on every single social media app, which means so there's more people looking and it costs less to be seen by them from an advertising standpoint. So those of you that are advertising, good for you. Those of you that are not advertising, shame on you. It's like watching this. It's like you didn't buy a stock in the stock market when the stock market was plummeting. Um, you, again, these are opportunities to be able to make money and be seen. You should take advantage of them. Uh, Instagram will reach uh, 112.5 million US users in 2020. That's 5.4% uh, increase over 2019. Uh, E-marketer is a great place to be able to get these types of numbers. They're very uh, accurate and uh, almost exact when it comes down to it in quarter four reporting. Um, it predicts the network will reach 117.2 million U US users in 2021. It's got over a billion, over a billion now users um, worldwide, but 117.2 million people in the U.S. use it. And that's not even including like other, like uh, multiple profiles that people have. So people typically, excuse me, have multiple profiles that they have on their devices. And so the, sometimes that's not even counting them. Um, as brands continue advertising on, uh, on Instagram, the uh, Facebook um, is going to rely more heavily on its advertising dollars. So by the end of 2020, Instagram ad revenue is projected to be at a 30% of the entire company's ad revenue. This is an important uh, fact. The reason I have that up there is because some of you run Facebook ads for your businesses and your plumbing's not in place and things of that nature. We're not going to get into that today, but Based on that, you're not running both ads, but you're not running them on Facebook and Instagram at the exact same time. And even worse than that, you're not running them in Instagram stories where the majority of us uh, consume our content. So typically we'll visit the feed a couple times. We'll give it three, four, five swipes. And then at that point, we're going to go ahead and move into stories. And that's where we're going to start consuming the majority of our content. Um, if you agree with me, go ahead and type it in chat. But I can tell you that um, a lot of what I do and how I work with our clients is based on human behavior and how human behavior reacts to content and consumption of content. And so what I've noticed is that the majority of people spend way more time in Instagram stories than they do in the feed. Um, they'll check the feed, you know, a couple times and then they'll jump into uh, Instagram stories and they'll fall down that rabbit hole. So the importance of Instagram stories is, is, uh, increasing, um, at scale and it needs to be, it needs to be something that you at least dedicate um, at, at, at the least five stories, a day, uh, five stories a day at the most. Um, I wouldn't go over around uh, 10 to 12. You start teetering over that 10 to 12 mark, it starts to break down into smaller dashes. 
And what happens is even if it's really good content, what happens is you start losing the attention of people and they'll make it three or four cl uh, clicks into your story away and then they'll, and then they'll drop off. So always check out those numbers down there below um, on people that are viewing your story. So uh, have you or have you not switched your uh, personal account, your personal Instagram account to a business account? If you have not, it's something that I recommend you do today. Um, I can, I'm going to show you guys how to do that um, when we go to the phone screen share side of the things. But if you just Google uh, switch my Instagram to a business profile, literally, it'll be right there. It'll be the first thing you see and it'll walk you right through it on how to do it. So it's really, really good. Um, there's reasons why you need to switch or why you should switch to an Instagram uh, business profile. And the reason being, especially if you're a, a person that has a business or owns a business or wants to build a brand. One, one third of Instagram impressions are for a business profile. So what that means is, people typically will see more of a business profile than they will of an actual person's personal Instagram uh, uh, profile or feed. So th that side is, okay, let's say I'm a real estate agent and I'm trying to build brand, but I've got a private Instagram. That doesn't make any sense, right? Um, at the end of the day, you guys might have two Instagrams. You might have one that's a business Instagram and it's all about sales, business, this, that, everything else. But guess what? Typically, we don't want to interact with that type of profile. We want to interact with someone who's real. So what you should be doing is taking your personal profile, switching it to a business profile. And I believe blending the two of them um, is the best move. Uh, this way, you can actually see better analytics when you are uh, looking at your Instagram. You're able to go down uh, and click into your analytics side and you can see how many people saw it. What, what are people trending towards? Um, what, what are the best performing posts? Things of that nature. So oddly enough, and this is a true story, about two days ago, um, I was on Instagram. Uh, I've D Rock, the videographer for Gary V and I have um, cultivated and created a relationship with each other. And we've been talking over the last year, year and a half about things. And um, he called me at like one in the morning, two nights ago. We talked for a really long time. And he basically said, uh, he said, dude, you should look at your analytics real quick. He's like, I'm just curious something. I said, all right, cool. So I looked at my analytics and he goes, what, what posts are people um, engaging with the most? You would be blown away. And this is where, this is why I want you guys to, and I think I posted about this on my own Instagram. This is why I want you guys to start looking less at the creative and a little bit more of the context. The ones that were performing the best were screenshotted tweets. Those were the best posts. Those were the posts that were getting the most interaction, most eyeballs and most engagement. Um, and those are the, less, the least, um, least creative posts that I could put out there. So, so based on that, a lot of the times what we think is cool and what's going to get a lot of eyeballs and get a lot of awareness ends up not being the, the hot and fire content that we thought it was. And it was really the ones that were really the least amount of creative behind it, but the most context within it. So uh, take that into consideration. That's why you need to look at your analytics because when you look at your analytics, you can see, oh, okay, this is what my audience is relating to the most. I need to make more content like this. So it's really important. And you can't see that with a personal profile. Third is the ability to run ads. You should be running ads for yourself and your own personal brand, driving back traffic to your uh, profile uh, endlessly. It should never end. It should be something that you continuously do. I typically have three ads running for my personal account. Um, at all times, um, I switch it up typically uh, every two weeks, every 30 days. When I do that, I'm, I'm putting out a piece of short snackable content. What I mean by that is like 15 seconds to 45 seconds of snackable content. That content's short, sweet to the point. If they like me and they like what I just said, they're typically going to go back to my profile and they're going to go and follow me. And so that is really truly how I've uh, uh, created a, such a large following in a short period of time was running ads and driving people back to my, back to my Instagram. The other side is I've utilized uh, and leveraged other platforms back to my Instagram. Um, and that's another thing that people typically do not do. You guys are not leveraging your other platforms to go back I and mean, be like, when's the last time that you were on LinkedIn and you said, Hey guys, follow me on Instagram. Or you were on Twitter and you said, Hey guys, follow me on, on Instagram. Or when you were on Instagram and said, Hey guys, follow me on Twitter. If you're not leveraging the other platforms to go get followers for that, you guys are losing. So just remember that. Odds are a majority of the people that are on LinkedIn also have an Instagram account, Instagram account, account, account. So, so leverage those platforms um, when you are trying to build your following. <clears throat> Mixing it up. So there's a couple different things that you can do. Brilliant. I have not ever done that. Yeah. I mean, and, and a lot of people feel bad um, about that, Laura. There's a lot of people feel bad when they ask, um, 
uh, if for people to follow them. And the thing is, is that it's okay to do that. It's okay to ask for followers. Um, what it's not a selfish thing. Um, if you're putting out good content, then you're doing it. And no, you're not losing. That's why you're here. You, if you weren't here and you weren't trying to learn, you wouldn't, you, you, then you would be losing. Uh, I never feel bad to ask. I'm just seeing it happen. Yeah, you should do it. Um, so mixing it up. So with Instagram, you have a couple different ways to do things, right? So you have feed posts, then you have uh, video or canvas, canvas or slide. Okay. Now what's interesting about this is that multi post or canvas which is kind of like a, um, like a slide, like a slideshow on Instagram, those posts inherently, inherently do very, very, very well right now on the platform. They seem to be doing very well and they're very clean. And, um, the reason being is because it's a disruption from the typical of what the human is doing within the app. So the, the, the typical within the app is this. Okay. When we move to a slideshow, we then start doing something different. So what we want to do within the app is we always want to do something different. So that's why these do so well. They're also kind of like telling a story. So you can utilize photo, image, and video inside those slideshows, which I really, really like. So you can tell a cool story in up to 10 different images or videos uh, within one post. Um, and they just are doing extremely well. So if you go to my Instagram, what you'll see is I utilize uh, a comic strip typically is what I'll do um, to get my message across. And um, I really, really like those and they're leveraging very well on Instagram right now. So typical one image uh, feed post or um, one video or the uh, slide share that you want to use. Um, show content from other platforms to drive traffic. We just talked about this, like I said before, and I can't tell you enough, sharing content from other platforms in your Instagram newsfeed lets your followers know that you're also other places and your messaging might be different on another platform, right? It might be different on LinkedIn than it will be on Instagram and or Facebook. So uh, leverage that. Tom Hurd, who's in here, does a great job on um, LinkedIn. Something that he could do could be to screenshot one of his LinkedIn posts and put it on Instagram. It's a great way to let people know, oh man, Tom's on LinkedIn. I should go connect with him. And you can create business relationships out of that. So utilize it video from IGTV and longer form video. Sometimes we have more to say than in 59 seconds. So we should be utilizing IGTV. Now IGTV is a separate app, but it's uh, in platform on Instagram. It's something that you should 100% be using. Um, it is vertical based. So nine by 16 format is the way that you should be posting in there. Um, and uh, I'm going to go over some apps that are going to help you guys kind of format that the right way and make sure that it, it looks correct. Um, but IGTV is a great way to not only utilize um, uh, an exterior URL to get people to, to drive traffic to a landing page or a URL um, if you don't have 10,000 followers, but it's also a great way to get long form content out there and build brand around that. Um, so if you have YouTube videos that you've posted up before, you have longer form videos that you post on LinkedIn or Facebook, IGTV is a great asset to be able to use. And I can tell you this right now, Instagram loves when people use IGTV. So they are very um, giving when it, when it comes to the fact that you utilize IGTV and post a preview in your profile to drive the, the person who sees that uh, back to IGTV. So I will tell you this, I highly, highly recommend uh, you utilizing uh, IGTV. And then of course, last is stories. And then this is in no particular order, but Instagram stories, like I said before, is one of the most important places uh, where you can tell messages quickly um, again, create that snackable content. And guys, I want you also to understand there's a reason why these platforms run in the time frames that they run into. They run into Facebook stories, 26 seconds, Instagram stories, 15, TikTok, 15 and 60, Snapchat, 15, you know, or 60. Um, they, they run in that format for a reason. And it's because the generation in my generation, I would say generation X and below consume content in small spurts, not in long, in long form. So that's why um, Instagram stories is just so beneficial to you guys right now. The formula that I use and the formula that I believe um, uh, that I use for all of our clients and, and the ones that you typically are going to see out there now uh, is, is this right here is education, entertainment, and then information slash testimonials. So when you're building a brand for yourself, you want to uh, you want to add value. You want to bring value to the people that are following you. So the question is, you know, how do you do that? <clears throat> 
you guys all do different things. Uh, we all that are in here currently right now uh, have different jobs. We have different, um, we have different uh, uh, assets that we can bring to the table and experiences that we can bring to the table to educate other people. Yet a lot of us don't, uh, don't do that. So what I'm doing right now is I'm educating you guys. And typically what I'm going to say here is, Hey guys, go follow me and you're going to learn more information. If you follow me every day, I'm going to teach you more and more and more. So instead of me selling you anything, I'm going to educate you all the way up to the point, typically, which I'm going to do here. I'm going to educate you up to the point on how to do it yourself. My industry, the way that my industry is set up is that I can, I can educate you all you want. Just like my post that I put out today, I can educate you all you want, whether you're actually going to fulfill and do it on your own is completely up to you. What most people find is that it's too hard for them to do on their own, or they don't have the time to do it on their own. So then they hire an agency like us to do it. But it's important that I give that education to the people that follow me because that makes me real. That makes me, I'm not constantly trying to sell in people's faces. And that right there, my friends, is one of the biggest tricks behind education. If you're asking for something in return, odds are it's a pitch. People aren't going to like it. People are a lot smarter now from a sales pitch standpoint than they were 30, 40 years ago. It's just a fact. Um, we've caught up to those types of sales pitches. So education, talk about what you do, short spurts or long spurts, add value and, uh, and, and solve problems. Um, a great website to be able to solve problems for people that are within your niche or industry or niche um, is Ask the Public. So if you go to askthepublic.com, it's a great website, type in your niche, niche, whatever you wanna call it, uh, type in that into, the, uh, into askthepublic.com and it'll give you basically a content plan based around questions that people in your industry are asking or consumers are asking. And then you can build out content for that based on those questions. And that's really what people want. They want you to answer questions that they have for free. And if they like you, they like the way that you talk, then they're gonna go, oh man, this guy knows what he's talking about or this girl knows what he's talking about. I'm gonna go ahead and do business with somebody like this. I like them. Look, you don't think people judge you on, on your look, you're crazy because they do. So I like them, I like the way they look, I like the way they talk, I like how they, they are giving me free information. I'm willing to pay for this person to help me. So that's how you wanna educate. So askthepublic.com, I'll type it in here actually so you guys can check it out. Great website, check it out. Entertainment. This is my favorite, my favorite part. In fact, I only, there's certain clients that I take on personally, okay? And based on that, um, I have a very long list of what I, what I want to be able to do from a creative standpoint and what they, they will allow me to do. And those are the types of clients that the only types of clients I will take. So I really like to be entertaining and have fun with social media. And when you can take a brand and do that, it's really, really fun and it's great. And that is what keeps people coming back. So I'm going to use somebody as an example from a real estate standpoint. So Chi is a great example from a real estate agent standpoint of consistently entertaining people and bringing them back to follow his content. And when they're ready to buy a house, they'll buy a house from him. Very rarely will he do any kinds of types of sales pitches and things of that nature. Now, Chi's a little bit different because Chi was an actor before he was a real estate agent. So he, that's already kind of an innate in him, right? Or Scott Bentley, who that mortgage guy on TikTok, same situation. Guy was, guy was a musician before he did it. Mike Ruder, another perfect example, right? Mike's a great friend of mine. You guys know I work with Mike hand in hand on his brand. Same situation. He was an artist. He was, he was a musician before he got into the title business. So it's easy and comfortable for them. But that doesn't mean, you know, and I know a lot of you feel this way. You're like, man, I wish I could do that. I wish I could do what they do. You don't, your entertainment doesn't have to be the same as, as theirs, right? You can entertain through memes. You can entertain through taking funny videos and adding some copy and content behind it. You can do whatever you want to do, but you have to continue to keep your audience entertained. You have to listen to your audience, but you have to keep them laughing to keep them coming back. Nobody wants to watch the show that doesn't have, that doesn't entertain them. They're going to turn it off and they're going to move to something else. So think about yourself, your brand, your business, whatever it is. Think about it as a media company. Think about it from a standpoint of, okay, we're in the eye of these people on a daily basis. They're going to get sick and tired of us going, we have the lowest mortgage rates. We have the best houses. We have the best inventory. We have the best nonprofit. We have this, we have that. Dude, at the end of the day, that, that's not going to keep people's attention. So you need to reverse engineer what you consume on social media and then take that 
and then utilize that in your own social media content. So that's how you come up with entertainment. But memes, that's a great way to start. Uh, and we're, we'll get into an app that helps you come up with memes really, really easy and it'll be fun for you. And then information and testimonials. The reason I like the information side of things is because I can sit here all day and tell you, right, and, and, and just verbally vomit all this minutia all over you about what you should be doing. But at the end of the day, if I don't have other people that I've done it for stand up and go, this guy knows what he's talking about, you should do what he says, then I haven't been social proof by the community. So the question is this, some of you have online reviews. Those are great, but online reviews can be made up. They can be fake. Trust me, I'm in the reputation management business. I've been in it for a very long time. I can tell you that there's a lot of fake reviews out there. So to back yourself up from a social proofing standpoint, invest in video. And when I say invest in video, some of you are going to go, oh man, I don't like to be on video. I don't like to be on camera. That's great. Ask your clients that love to be on camera to get on camera for you and talk about how great you are and how much you've helped them. So for, for as an example, and again, everything that I'm talking about is stuff that I use myself to do this. So when, when I have a client and they're happy, four, five, six months down the road, a year down the road, I'm going to go to them and be like, hey, man, or hey, miss, <laughs> could, you, could you do a video testimonial of me real, for, for me real quick? It's only going to be about a minute long. I just want you to, quite honestly, I want you to talk about your experience with me. I'm not going to tell you what to say. Say whatever the fuck you want to say, but just do it. And they do it. And then I take that and then I post it as a social media post. But that is a piece of content that I can use forever. That's something that can be used over and over and over and over again. And it's something that I truly believe uh, is going to help you get to the next level. If other people say you're good, then you're good. The public is, is in a tendency is going to, to trust them and say, okay, I'm going to do business with this person too. So information and testimonials, gigantically huge. So mobile, mobile apps to make this stuff easier. And this is always the fun part, right? That was the boring part that we're going to get into the fun part here. So here's some mobile applications and or U, mobile URLs that you can add to your home screen. Um, these are apps or websites that I use or, or the agency uses uh, almost on a daily basis. Is everybody following along, by the way? I'll give you a second. Just a second. Okay, cool. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Laura. I think you're just talking for everybody, which is totally cool. I love it. So this first one over here um, is called Affy, A-P-P-H-I. This mobile app is, uh, I came upon this a couple years ago and I loved it because I was trying to look for an application that would let me schedule out my Instagram stories. So a lot of this, a lot of the times when, you know, throughout our day, it's when I said five to 10 Instagram stories, it's going to be tough for you to do that. But if you can create content the day before, the night before, whatever it is, and you can schedule it out and have it post for you, then it's a great thing. And a lot of people sometimes are against that. I'm a huge believer in, dude, get organized and schedule your posts out. It's not that difficult. You can find 20 minutes or 30 minutes in a day or at night. And I know, trust me, because I have kids, I, I know what it's like. You can find 20 or 30 minutes in a day to get creative and then schedule things out. So Affy is a mobile app. That gives you the ability. Good stuff, bro. I have to run into another reason. Let's get you. Yeah. All right, Tommy. Thanks, buddy. See ya. You, you, I think I pretty much have taught you all this stuff already. Um, Appy is a great mobile app. Download it. Um, it gives you the ability to uh, schedule out your Instagram stories, and then the app will actually post to your Instagram stories for you. This is not a push notification like a Hootsuite or a Later or things of that nature. This is an actual app where you can schedule out your social media content and it will post for you. And it will actually post to Instagram stories right into your Instagram stories, not just a push notification. So out of all the apps here, uh, Appy is one of the most, the, the best ones from a pr productivity standpoint. It's great. It'll save you a lot of time um, and it's a lot of help. Uh, Bead.io is a great website. Um, it's, it's a paid website. Um, after a certain period, um, and it's not very expensive. I think it's like 10, 15 bucks a month, but this will give you the ability to create um, some of those videos, like the ones that you see that I do, right? So they have like the progress bar, the uh, subtitling, the titles at the top and stuff like that. Veed.io uh, is a great website for that. Now, if you can't get in front of a laptop or a desktop and you got to do it on the go, then Veem.ly, so Veem, I call it Veemly, V-E-M-E.ly -E is another great app. You can literally 
do videos just like me where you have the title at the top, subtitles at the bottom, progress bar, you can change the colors around, everything else like that, and you can do it right within that uh, mobile app. And it is the most accurate auto-generated subtitling video app I've ever used. I can tell you that typically I only have to switch maybe one or two words in like a two to three minute video. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing. Spark by Adobe is great from a creative standpoint. Let's say you're having trouble coming up with content creative. Um, you're, you've just hit a brick wall. And that happens to a lot of us from a creative standpoint. We just hit brick walls. We can't come up with something creative. Um, and if we don't have other creative minds to lean on, then we're kind of on our own. So Spark by Adobe is a great, uh, if you have an Adobe account, do it. But if you don't have an Adobe account, it's okay. You can still get Spark. Um, I think it's like six, seven bucks a month, but it's a great great app and it gives you the ability to do some really, really cool things, things that people have never seen before. Um, so it's a great creative app um, for stories, Facebook posts, YouTube. I mean, and pretty much anything you can think of, you can utilize it from that standpoint. Pexels free is really great. So if you've noticed in some of my content lately, I've been mishmashing like um, videos from other places, right? Within what the context of what I'm talking about. So I'll be maybe talking on a topic but I'll have B-roll video that's out that, that's outside of what was shot of me talking inside the video. And Pexels Free is a great way to do that. Or it's a great way to create, um, st use stock video footage to create um, a video to motivate people or whatever it is. So Pexels is free. Um, doesn't cost you any money. Download it, make a, make a quick video, uh, type in your text. It's very easy to use. And by the way, guys, everything that I'm showing you right here is something that all of you can use. It's not, it doesn't, you don't have to be a, um, a uh, project manager, manager or a marketing person to be able to do these things. These are all things that are very point and click kind of go. Um, so it'll make it your life a lot easier. Remove.bg, Chris and uh, Chris just used this the other day. I know there's a couple other people that used it. So all of us have run into this situation where it's like, dude, I really want to make this really cool thing. And I got this great picture of me, but I want to utilize this picture and there's a background and I don't like it remove.bg, type that into your Safari or Google on your Droid device um, and go there and upload a photo of yourself or whatever it is. It could be a product that you have. Um, and then right from there, it's going to remove the background of that image and you're going to uh, be able to utilize it somewhere else as like a sticker. So you could use that sticker in Instagram stories um, per se or, or a piece of uh, creative that you're, you're creating for Instagram. So remove.bg is great. And I'm going to show that to you when we go to the phone sharing side of the device. Um, but I, I really, really love that URL and it's been great for me. Voice Story is a mobile app that you can download and you can do a real quick uh, 15 second voiceover and it'll subtitle for you. Um, I have not used this as much as I used to, but I really like it from a standpoint if you don't like to be on camera and you want to tell a story real quick um, and it's subtitled, uh, I believe it's, it's, it's a good, quick, fast app to be able to use. Um, for the real estate agents in here, I see a lot of you um, on, on Facebook where you will be walking through a house, especially now because people are quarantined and things of that nature. I see a lot of you walking through a house and you've got your phone up and it's pointing towards here, but what you're doing is you're taking away from something on Facebook's algorithm that it loves, and Instagram's algorithm that it loves more than anything, which is the human face. It loves the human face. So based on that, Mixcam will give you the ability to use the dual cams inside your phone. So you'll be able to show what you're pointing your camera at, which is out, right? So you're, I could show you this room right now. And I could show you my face while I'm talking and narrating you through the video of what I'm, sh what I'm showing you. Based on that, you're giving people two different visuals to be able to take in and it keeps people's attention much, much longer. So real estate agents, if you don't have mixed cam, I highly recommend downloading it. Use that um, to shoot your video of your next walkthrough through your home or whatever you want to use it for. Um, and I believe that you'll get a lot more um, uh, interaction and engagement within the video than just showing the room and walking through it. Mematic. So this is the app that I personally use to create my memes or memes for my clients. Um, it is a great mobile application. It has in-app in, um, in video, in-app GIF, and everything else right there for you. Um, so if you can't come up with something yourself, you have the ability to go in Mematic and find content, post it, and then have your little meme context above it for whatever you want, or bring in video from your uh, camera roll or wherever else you want to do it. So Mematic is a great one, and I'll show you that one as well. 
Uh, Design Lab. Design Lab is a great app for Instagram stories. Um, if, again, if you're not a creative and you don't work within Adobe or anything else like that, Design Lab will actually make it look like you do. Um, and it's a great app. And we're going to, again, I'm going to show you that app as well. It's a great app to be able to come up with some really cool different designs that people probably have never seen before. Um, and it'll be really eye catching. And again, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to show you is going to really tell you, it's like, they're, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, man, like, did you pay somebody to do this for you? Um, so, or they're going to ask you how you did it, right? And you keep those secrets for yourself or you can share them, do whatever you want to do. Instaspace.org is a great uh, place uh, to be able to format your copy. And when I say copy, I'm talking about what you put into the content section of your Instagram post, right? So you're, you put up your, either your canvas um, or your image or your video, and now you're ready to go ahead and type out your caption. So Instaspace, you can type out your caption, copy, copy it, put it in instaspace.org and it'll properly format it for you with the right spaces, the right separation for hashtags, all that type of stuff. Um, so instaspace.org, it's, it's great. I use it. That's why my formatting is so clean. Um, and I really like it. InShot, if you don't have InShot, I don't know where you've been. InShot is probably the easiest video editing app on the planet. Um, it also will help you take, so let's say like we had a video that was like, 16 by nine horizontal. And I was like, oh man, I want to get this on IGTV. It's long form video. It's like a three minute video. I want to put this on IGTV, but I know it's not going to fit there. I can upload that video to InShot, pick the canvas. So your canvas is the dimensions of the video, right? So 16 by 19, I need to get that thing to nine by 16 for IGTV and vertical. And I put it into InShot. I just click nine by 16 and boop, it pops it right into nine, nine by 16 format download it to my phone, upload it to IGTV, hit preview for uh, preview for newsfeed, and boom, we're ready to go. So InShot 100% will help you with a dimension standpoint and a formatting standpoint of your videos if you have some of that video there. Mojo is another really, really great mobile application uh, from a pattern disruption standpoint and a design creative standpoint, very similar to Design Lab, but a little bit different. Um, and again, I highly uh, recommend downloading Mojo, um, and I'll show again, I'll show you uh, what that looks like uh, on my phone. Unscreen.com is actually a parent company of remove.bg. So let's say you've got a video, but you want to remove this background. Now I would never want to remove my background because I love it so much, but if I wanted to remove it and add something else or have it be transparent or overlay it onto something else, um, unscreen.com, add that to your home screen. You can do a video just like this. And let's say I wanted to put the water or ocean behind me. I can upload my video pick the ocean, have the ocean behind me, and boom, now I've got a back screen um, for, my, for my video. Um, so it is a great, it's a great little uh, trick and hack to be able to get rid of the background of a video. Um, and a lot of people don't know how to do that. This is a great way to do it. Um, again, same with remove.bg for images. And then video saver. Video saver, um, like, it's like a new one that I'm like totally in love with. So let's say like I see a video on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram or Twitter or something like that that I really, really like. And I'm like, damn, I can't download it to my phone. And I know a lot of you have dealt with this. You're like, I want, it, I want that video, but how do I get it? Now, in the, in the prior days, we were screen recording and then we would crop it, you know, in, fo in, the, in the photo section of our phone. Now, you just take it, copy the link. Uh, go into Video Saver's app, the Video Saver app, post the link in, and uh, from that standpoint, it'll download the video for you. You can swipe over to the left, hit download, and it'll download the video right to your device, and then you can utilize that video maybe in Mematic or in Design Lab or Mojo or wherever you want to use it um, in creating content. So Video Saver, really cool app, um, and I use that probably every day, if not every other day.